and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him, who build the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, welcome on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. God calls us to open our hearts for a dialogue, that we may be able to live in harmony with one another, that our relationship with God reflects in our relationship with our community. And so, my dear friends, as we begin with this Mass, we pause for a while in silence asking Him for mercy and compassion. I confess, so mighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. With great praise to God, we all together say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those you who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, a wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, 
but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God. And we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, not your heart. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Maza in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my work. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves one another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew. 
Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it should be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. Let me share with you this story that I heard years ago and I was able to pull it out online. So it says in this story, long time ago, a girl named Lily got married and went to live with her husband and mother-in-law. After a short time, he found that she absolutely could not get along with her mother-in-law. Their personalities were entirely different, and Lily could not stand her mother-in-law's habit of nagging her. As days went by, their relationship worsened. Lily's husband was caught in the middle and felt very miserable. Eventually, Lily could no longer stand her mother-in-law extreme attitude and she went to find her father's friend, Mr. Wang, who sold Chinese medicine. She told him about her situation and asked him, for some poison in order to take care of her problem for good. Mr. Wang pondered for a moment and said, I can help you solve your problem, but you have to listen to me and do exactly what I say. Well, Lily agreed. Mr. Wang took out a packet of herbs and handed it to Lily. He told her, you cannot get rid of your mother-in-law quickly by poison. If you do, others will suspect you. The herbs that I chose will take effect slowly. The toxin will gradually develop into the body. It is best that you prepare meat and fish for her every day and put a small amount of this in the dishes. In addition, in order to keep others from suspecting, you, when she dies, you must act respectful toward her and obey her. Do not quarrel with her either. Well, Lily promised to do as she did, and after thanking Mr. Wong, she rushed home to implement her plan of this poison strategy to her mother-in-law. Every day, she cooked special dishes for her. She remembered Mr. Wong's words to avoid suspicion she tried her best to control her temper and obeyed her mother-in-law. Gradually, Lily found that she did not get angry as easy as before, and she no longer had disputes with her mother-in-law. Her favorite moment was their tea time. They sat together, talked over, and shared their thoughts. Each day was a day of transformation because it was a moment of them revealing oneself and sharing their thoughts about life. She started singing her praises to her neighbors, 
relatives, and friends, and said Lily was the best daughter-in-law in the world. Seeing that his mother-in-law and wife could live in harmony, Lily's husband was very happy. One day, Lily went to get help from Mr. Wong again. She said, please help me stop the poison. I do not want to kill my mother-in-law. She has become a good woman and a lover like my own mother. I do not want her to die because of that poison. Mr. Wong nodded and smiled. You can rest assured I never give you any poison. Those herbs are to nourish the body and will only improve your mother-in-law's health. The only poison was in your heart and in your attitude toward her. It is fortunate that your hatred has been washed away by your love for her. Dear friends, in this world, resentment cannot be eliminated by poison. Only love can wash away the grievances in your heart, allowing you to live in harmony with others. There is unlimited possibility if one is willing to change and beautiful result will eventually come back to bless your own life. End of the story. I don't want to talk about poisoning here because it might be what we call not proper for a sermon to be talking about poison. But I hope all of us was enlightened about the moral of the story. We are taught about one simple thing in our own lives, and that is the art of dialogue. It is how we are able to open our heart and give our own way of once again trying to listen to one another and be able to put into our own selves that line of which we would once again be into an agreement in all the terms of our own life. This is our gospel today. Jesus tries to tell his disciple, if there is something against your brother or your sister, you need to talk and always be able to become open to tell her or him her faults. And I think this kind of level that the Lord Jesus Christ is trying to his disciples is that because as a disciple, they must radiate the love of Jesus to one another. And I think the greatest test of our discipleship with Jesus is how we are able to manifest in real life situations our own way of relating to one another. As we would always reflect in the teachings of Christ is that what is the use of our deep prayer life and our struggle towards holiness if this is not manifested in our day-to-day -day relationship with one another? And thus, the greatest challenge of our holiness, therefore, is when we are able to win our brothers and sisters in Christ during times of conflicts. Way back in the history of our church, we would always see that it's never been a harmonious relationship or state. Our church has been through time, have encountered a lot of problems when it comes to relationship. In the early Christian communities, the apostles too quarrel to certain points and ideas. And even in the dark history of our church, we may find that there has been deep-seated conflicts as well. But in the course of this time, we as a church has been continually struggling towards making our own life as a life responding to this call of Jesus to become open for a dialogue. 
And thus, a dialogue paves the way towards reconciliation. We mend our own way that we are able to find ways and means that we may be able to restore back communications once again. As we always know, and as what Jesus said, we need to gather once again and treat each and every one as our brothers and sisters. And that is why, as a church struggling towards building our community, it's an ongoing process of trying to find that grace of God, that spark of light, and once again, that we may be able to profess this challenge of Christ himself. When two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so, dear friends, I think this challenge of Jesus is not just simply an act of what we call prayer. When we are gathered in the name of Jesus in prayer, he will grant our prayers. But Jesus also emphasized to all of us, when we are able to gather together, not only two, not only three, but when we are able to build our communities amidst our own differences, it is then that we are able to win this challenge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As what Jesus would always say, we could never be the same, but we could always become one. As what they say, diverse in charism, but we are still one in purpose. And that is why it is here as early as the early Christian communities, Jesus has always telling being his disciples, we are all different, but we could always become united in the same purpose. And so today as a church and believing that we are being enlightened by the power of the Holy Spirit, we continue this challenge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though Jesus is not visible among us, but it is the power of the Holy Spirit that inspires our church, that we could still continue to move along with our different kinds of ministries. We could live together as a church that we believe that it is the love of God that continue to inspire us amidst our own differences, weakness, and humanity. Part of that is that there will always be realities of conflicts. There will always be diversities of ideas. And there will always be what we call disagreement among us. By the end of the day, Jesus will always tell us, let us always sit together, listen to one another, and become open to the grace of the dialogue that continually transform our hearts before God. I have been living in a community since I was 13 when I entered the seminary. Most of my life has been spent in the seminary since I wasn't already allowed to go home. And because of that, I learned that living in a community of 200 people is really something you need to get along with different kinds of personalities. You need to get along with different kinds of people. You need to get along with the different kinds of ideas. When I was in high school, it's a different kind of challenge when facing young people of my age during the time. And even when I reach in theology, it's even a challenge because you will be living with different kinds of seminarians from different life backgrounds, and even some of them were from different countries. And I know for sure, yes, there are lots of disagreements. There are lots of tears and laughters too. 
But at the end of the day, we would always remember in our sharing. Yes, we may fight or disagree in certain matters about our own way of looking at things. But at the end of the day, it is our prayer our own way of sharing and listening to one another that reconcile us to the love of God. And so, my dear friends, this is how it is to live our own life. This is how it is to live our own faith. We are the church. We do not only come here in order to worship and order to profess our faith. We come here in order to build communities. We come here in order to fortify our relationship. We come here in order to testify to the power of dialogue. And because of that, reconciliation could always be unfolded in our own lives. Probably we will begin with ourselves. Are we open in order to accept certain differences of others in our own life? Are we ready to listen to those who are in conflict with us? Are we open for a dialogue? How does this apply in our families? How does this apply in our work environment? How does this apply in my relationship to my community? or probably in our St. Jerome Parish community as well. Thus, Jesus continued to call us. His word is always a challenge, but it is always what we call the most Christian way of responding to it. Let us pray that the grace of God would continue to inspire us, that his words of love one another as he has loved us becomes the prevailing factor and element in our Christian faith. May Jesus, our Lord of dialogue and love, continue to build and strengthen our community. Amen. Let us now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. I believe one Lord Jesus Christ, Father for all ages. God from God, light from light, true God and true God, be God and not made. Substantial with the Father, perform all things for me, for us and for our salvation. Amen. 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 Our Savior was crucified in their precious body. He was in the Spirit. He was in on the third day, according to the Scriptures. spoken to the prophets. God, our Father, is generous and patient with us despite our sins and failings. He wants us to be the same to our brethren in sin and error. With confidence, we pray to the Father. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Give our Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons a heart that reaches out to sinners 
so that they may be effective ministers of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. May all of us gathered here today in the Eucharist see and understand the wisdom in St. Paul's words, love does no evil to our neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May all sinners and those who stray from the path of righteousness come to see their transgressions and humbly ask humble pardon from the Lord to be reconciled with the Christian community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who serve in our military and for their families, may they know God's guidance and protection and our prayerful gratitude for their many sacrifices. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our frontline workers and first responders, doctors, nurses, and paramedics, for police and fire professionals, and all those who continue to work to serve us during this time of pandemic, Grant them the fortitude, safety, and grace to maintain their tireless efforts on our behalf. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our brothers and sisters at home who are one with us celebrating this liturgy, for the sick and homebound, for our faithful departed, and for the intentions we hold in our hearts, and for the special intentions in our book of prayers. We pray to the Lord. For Eduardo Rafael, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers, heal our troubled consciences and wounded hearts, and unite us as a family in your church, to Christ our Lord. Pray, my dear brethren, may sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh God, that give us the gift of true prayer and of peace. Graciously grant that through this suffering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be fratefully united in mind and heart to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall may become the means of our salvation to Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of the angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join me theirs in one chorus of exaltation be acclaimed. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed the only Lord and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed, he himself took the bread and giving you thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said it a blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and bury our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Had a Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, he said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My father lives, there is room for all, there is room for all. Where my father lives, and a place for you will be waiting there. Come to me, I will bring you. truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Where my Father lives, there is room for all. There is room for all. Where my Father lives, and a place for you will be waiting there. Come to me, I will bring you home. Have faith in God, have faith in me. Father lives, and a place for you will be waiting there. Come to me, I will bring you home. If you love me and keep my commands, I will not leave you orphaned. I will return. Where my father lives, there is room for all. 
there is room for all where my father lives and a place for you will be waiting there come to me i will bring you My peace I give, God's own spirit will guide you throughout your life. Where my father lives, there is room for all, there is room for all. Where my father lives, and a place for you will be waiting there. Come to me, I will bring you home. Dear brothers, you are sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sick and homebound members of our parish family. Go to them with our love, our care, and our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the gentle healer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious
Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, to the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. All parents of elementary, middle, and high school children are invited to attend an informational faith formation meeting on September 13th or 14th at 6 p.m. in the church. This year, classes will be virtual with once a month social and retreat components. Please contact Margie at the parish office for additional information. And I would like to continually extend my gratitude and thanks for your unceasing support to our parish. And also I would like to extend also our continued oneness with our um, parishioners who are still attuned in their respective homes. And now as you would notice that to those who have viewed our um, streaming masses online via Facebook and YouTube, you have seen some great improvements when it comes to our sound and our video, how we have transmitted um, what you call this one, our live streaming. It is because of the help and assistance of one of our parishioners, um, Dan Gorgon and Ron Buckles, and of course, Andrew, and to all of those in the technical team who continually give us some um, good comments and um, what you call assistance and how we are able to improve our live stream masses. So we're very thankful also to them for their kind assistance and help for all of us. And also to all of you who continually support our parish um, by sending all your offerings online by e-giving and by just handing them over in our own masses. They continually help us go through also as we continually do our ministry as a parish community. Our St. Jerome Feast Day is upcoming and um, we will be announcing um, some of our events soon and hopefully we're able to really put into our hearts this consciousness that um, we are truly one parish family and community in prayer and in imitation of our dear patron saint, St. Jerome. So thank you again, and um, may all of us become one, especially during this time of pandemic. Let us now stand to pray to our loving mother for her intercession during this time of pandemic. O Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels, and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today, your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. But also already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are a compassionate mother. Health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our Holy Mass has been offered with a go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God us our Father, we are family. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me.